In the school system, I was assisted, I was never assisted by a single Munyankwere when I was studying. The only people who, who helped me to study were two Baganda, one white man, and uh, somehow the, 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 the local governments were giving scholarships at some stage, and also the, the, the government of Uganda. Now, the two Baganda who, who helped me to go to, this was before, in the colonial times, before the economy had become more monetized. But even at that stage, we had one fat Muganda from Barara. He was called Bukenya by Banyankore. That's a Bukenya, but for the Banyankore, you know, they destroy everything. His name was Bukenya, but the Banyankore called Bukenya. Now, this fat man would come to Ntungamo, our area, in the monthly cattle auction market, and buy, cow, buy, buy cows, including my father's cows, and take them to Mbarara for slaughter. There was not a single Mnyankwere who was involved in, 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 in the cattle trade that time. It was only this Muganda man, Bukenya, and then there was another Muganda man from Kampala. Apparently, he was well known here in Kampala. He was called Warusi Mpanga. He's the one also who used to come and buy cows and bring them to Kampala here. So these are the ones who would buy my father's cows. My father had cows, but he needed money. He couldn't, he couldn't take a cow to the school to pay school fees in a cow. He had to convert the, 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 the cow into money and go and pay my school fees. But we are not buying, you, we are not buying, you, we, are, we are not buying you, those cows. Now the other the other man who helped me was a man called he was a white man called Shea. Shea was based in Ishaka, and at, at that time Chirembe Mines had started this Chirembe Mines for 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 copper, and Shea was buying cows from the markets and taking them to, to Chirembe Mine for the miners. These are the three people who helped me to get education. Later on, the, the, the local government and the other people came in, the, the, the central government here, to, get, to give us either, either half or full bursaries. So therefore, point number one, if you are talking about prosperity of your people, you are not talking about para parasitism. If you are not a parasite, you must love Uganda. You must love Kenya. You must love Tanzania. You must love Rwanda. You must love Burundi. All those people who talk about sectarianism are enemies, first and foremost, of their own people, of the, of the very group they, they, they claim to be speaking for. The Banyankore don't buy from one another. Why? Because they are producing similar products. This Mnyankwere has got bananas. The neighbor has got bananas. The neighbor cannot buy from this one. This one cannot buy from the other one. This one has got milk. The other one has got milk. This one has got beef. The other one has got beef. Therefore, although they have wealth, they have cow, they have land, they have water, but to turn it into, into wealth, into prosperity, they would be stuck. And that's why the Wanyankwere now need Uganda. That's why the, the rescuers, those who rescue Wanyankwere from poverty, are mainly the non Wanyankwere who come to buy their milk to buy their bananas, to buy their beef. So if you go and you find that a Mnyankwere has built a good house, know that that house, yes, is from his cows, but it is because 
some people from Kampala and from Jinja and from other parts of Uganda bought the milk of this man and bought his beef or bought his bananas. So that's why your movement, this movement you have heard of called NRM. From 1965, we saw this. And we said, no, instead of parochialism, for us, we emphasize patriotism. You must love Uganda. Patriot means uh, fatherland. You must love Uganda. Why love Uganda? Because these Banyankore need Uganda for their prosperity. But if you go to Acholi, you go to the border. I went to the border with Sudan in Lamo, in Acholi. The people there were quarreling with the, their neighbors, the Langi. They were saying, we produce Sim Sim here in Lamo, near the border with Sudan. And these langis from Rira come and pay us 1,000 shillings a kilo. When they get to Kampala, they sell it at 10,000. That was another quarrel. But still, you could not miss the linkage that the Achoris on the border with Sudan, this one is producing Sim Sim, the neighbor is producing Sim Sim. The neighbor cannot buy from this one. This one cannot buy from this one. The only people who buy this Sim Sim are we the Kampalians, whatever you call us, who don't produce Sim Sim, who buy it from the, the Achoris. So the Achoris are liberated from poverty by us, we, who do, I have never produced a kilo of Sibu Sibu in my life. But we use it. And who are producing it? They are Chodis on the border with, with Sudan. And we are the ones who buy, who buy it here in Kampala. So therefore, this is the first step. That's why the NRM says, principle number one, of the national resistance movement is, is that if you want prosperity for your people, love Uganda. If you say, I am a Mnyankore, but I don't care about Uganda. I care more about Ankore. You are a liar. You are actually enemy number one of the Banyankore. Because if the Banyankori did not have Uganda, they would not be prosperous. So, by you being against Uganda, you are against the prosperity of the Banyankori. You are enemy number one. So when you hear all these opportunities, talking about tribes, about religion, those are enemies, first and foremost, of their own people, of their very people. 